What is going on traders? So the market did it. The market is at all time highs. If you take a look at the SPY and the QQQ adjusted for dividends, you'll see that we already crossed the all time highs. Something that obviously I thought was possible uh, come around September, October time. So where do we go from here? Obviously, everybody wants a pullback and even those that don't want to pull back are you know, naturally a bit shaky as we get to these all time high levels. Hang on, let me sit down real quick. There's a really nice fireplace right there. It's gas, but so in this video, I wanted to share with you my thoughts on the current market, what I think is going to happen, the couple of scenarios that I see that are possible and how we should set ourselves up uh, for the coming year. Obviously, 2023 is almost done and the Santa rally has proven itself unless something catastrophic happens in the last couple of weeks. But on average, the last five trading days of December, which this year will start December 23rd and the first two trading days of January are the most consistently bullish time periods in stock market history. 78% of the time, this period is actually positive with an average gain of 1.6% around there. Sorry, I think it's 1.33%, but nonetheless. Also, we are seeing bears finally start to capitulate. If you look at the put call ratio, this is something that was above one consistent, consistently is now below one at around 0 0.5 to 0 0.6, meaning a lot of bears uh, on that, that uh, OPEX, that quad witching day that we had, a lot of bears closed their puts and now we are seeing that equilibrium once again. As you know, when we get to those extreme situations where put call ratio is above one, that is actually more likely to cause a squeeze. It is not more likely that you will be right if you go short. Now, I did a full write up in the Discord about my macro analysis for the coming weeks. Come join us, use the coupon code down below if you're interested. Honestly, it's worth it just for the macro analysis, let alone the trade alerts, let alone the futures, options, trades, etc. But part of what I was saying is that the S&P 500, right, and the QQQ are at all time highs right now. So. We don't have much historical analysis to go off of. So how do we determine what is going to happen from here? Well, we have to look at fundamental data points as well as external ones because we, we can't really go off of technical analysis. I mean, you can use a FIB extension and try to project where we're going to go. But let us take a look at the data that we do have, which is fundamental. If you take a look at the S&P 500 earnings per share right now, right, for the index as a whole, it is 22. Now that is historically expensive. We have an average in the modern day market era of around 19. But also we are coming off of an EPS contraction period, meaning the previous earnings per share for the S&P 500 were higher than the current one, right? And so we are coming off of a contraction period and we are now at an expansion, but we are already at 22, meaning how much more one way do we have left for the S&P 500 to trade uh, forward earnings. And we've never had a period where we've come out of a contraction at an EPS of 20 or above where we did not see a contraction the following year. In general, you want to see obviously an expansion in EPS coming off of a contraction year or a number of contraction years, but you want to give yourself a solid starting point. Meaning if you look historically at this chart here, you'll see that, that when we come out of a contraction period into an expansion period and the EPS is somewhere in the 12, 13, 14 range, then we have something to work with. We can go towards the mean of 19 and maybe slightly above, which means that we will likely see forward periods of contraction. But this I think supports the thesis that we are likely coming up on some resistance in 2024 and we will likely see some sort of recession in 2024. Now, one thing that can happen that is similar to what we saw during periods where the Fed was actually hiking rates or threatening to hike rates. In 2015, we saw that famous double dip correction, right? Now, this was completely Fed driven. So what can happen here? Um, there's a couple of scenarios that can happen in 2024. If the Fed continues with its tightening, if it continues rolling assets off their balance sheet, and if it continues holding rates where they are until unemployment gets above 4%, where you know there is a threat that something breaks as people lose their jobs and defaults start happening, and then we have these credit risks that start uh, springing to the top of our credit markets, right? Especially ones that, that we are not currently aware of. This would be some sort of black swan event. Then obviously, you know, I, I think that the market will rally slightly into uh, until that, that event happens or signs of that event happens. But if the Fed actually capitulates, meaning that if the Fed for some reason, maybe due to, um, you know, election pressures, due to White House pressures, we saw them capitulate in 2015. 
And we saw them capitulate in 2018, both under the Obama administration and under the Trump administration, where they were sort of pressured to either cut rates or stop raising rates. And then the market kept going back up, right? So if the Fed capitulates in 2024 early, before unemployment hits that 4%, before there's a chance for something to break, if they cut rates uh, you know, in the first quarter of 2024, which some Fed members actually are expecting, not a majority of them, but some of them are actually expecting, um, and Fed funds, Fed funds futures traders are also expecting that. I think it was the last time I looked was around 50%. I'm going to have to go back and look what the probability is. But if that happens, then I think the market is going to continue to rally into oblivion in 2024. So I think really it, the, 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 you know, the metric of easy money, which the Fed dictates, is really going to determine how far we rally in 2024, in my opinion. Here's what I can tell you. The biggest gift will be some sort of double dip correction like we saw in 2015. And I don't think that the Fed is actually going to cut rates until there are signs of something breaking, in my opinion. So I do think that the Fed hold holding rates there, you know, higher for longer, continuing to roll assets off the balance sheet. Um, and, and, you know, potentially causing a supply shock to treasuries because the Fed isn't buying treasuries anymore. I do think that that will likely spring about some sort of recession that will be clearer after Q2 of 2024. And I think the market can rally into some resistance up until that point. Now, the extent of that rally and the extent of a recession are not known. So as I said before, you have to factor in the probability of the market rallying, like the S&P rallying well past 5,000. And then by the time we have a recession, we drop to a previous low, or, or sorry, a, a previous high that is now a, a low. In terms of how I'm positioning myself, uh, how, <laughs> himself, how I'm positioning myself, um, you guys know, I, I already set, you know, set ourselves up based on our buys on, on the SPY at 410, based on my thesis that the market could see all-time highs. I already explained this a million times. Go back and watch the old videos if you want my thesis on that. And if you are a long-term holder, you want to hold that SPY that you bought at 400, at 410 and below. If you are a long-term holder, it's hard to... To, to let go of those shares that you, you might never see those those prices again, right? You might, but there's a high chance you won't. Like when I was buying the SPY, right, back in 2009, 2010, when the SPY was, it, it fell below 100 and, and then it popped above in the low hundreds. We're never going to see that again. That's never going to happen again. So at some point, the low entry that you bought, right? If you are a long-term investor, you will never, you will likely never see that again. So at this point, you can sell calls against your SPY, against your QQQ. As I showed you the earnings per share metrics for the S&P 500, the market isn't really cheap at the moment, isn't exactly cheap at the moment. There are a few stocks that, that I think uh, that there are some value that you can drive out of them. I did issue a, a buy on PayPal uh, over a month ago now. There are a few stocks as well, such as Disney, that, that might take a very long time to rally, but are you know historically cheap. Otherwise, I don't think you can justify buying the S&P 500 and QQQ right here. I think you have to wait for a pullback, which I think is coming. Not quite sure about, about a correction yet. Remember, a pullback is uh, up to 10% and a correction is between 10 and 20% down. So I'm not quite sure on a correction just yet. I know a pullback is coming just based on the technical indicators right now firing up. Uh, there's a whole bunch of divergences as well, bearish divergences as well. So I, I do expect you know, maybe a four to seven percent pullback. A double dip correction would be a gift, especially to those of you that that actually missed out on the last buy. And I do think there's an opportunity in bonds right now because what people don't understand about bonds is this: not only are you locking in the yield, but you also take advantage of the increase in NAV. So, for instance, say that you, that you bought a bond that you know pays five percent or a treasury that pays five percent, and you know now uh, you lock in that five percent and then yields start dropping and the value of that bond goes up. So not only are you making that 5%, 
but you were also now making money because your bond got more expensive as yields drop. This also works for bond ETFs, which is why we heavily invested in TMF, TLT, AGG, etc. So in summary, I do think a pullback is coming. Not quite sure about a correction just yet. I do think that we will continue likely uh, rallying into the first part of 2024. I don't think the Fed is going to cut in Q1 of 2024. Obviously, data, the CPI that we get January, February could change all that. So take this with a grain of salt. I'm not Nostradamus. But I don't think as of now, the Fed is going to cut Q1 2024. I do think that rates are going to be held higher for longer. And they're going to keep rolling assets off the balance sheet to the point where uh, something is likely to break or at least... Uh, you know, something is likely to some some signals that something is going to break will likely start showing up by Q2, Q3, Q4 of 2024. And as always, I do think corrections are viable in blue chips and in indices. Pullbacks, not so much if you have not yet invested. Anyway, quick little update for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to go back out and enjoy the slopes. There isn't much snow here, but there's definitely a lot of snow uh, up on, on the mountain. So I'm going to go enjoy that. Uh, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the, the market hitting all-time highs. Do you think that we are going to see a violent drop-off? And don't just say that because you want it to happen. Like, back it up by some sort of thesis. Do you think the market is going to keep ripping? Are you invested? Are you selling your stocks? Would love to know. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Come join us, guys. Stay safe out there. Peace.